Brew Oil is a highly innovative and versatile concrete company in the Netherlands. They've got a knack for innovation and experimentation, and they've been focusing some of their energy on 3D printed concrete. With their manufacturing plants, they have all the materials they need. Brew Oil is quite experienced with experimenting with new ways to expand their product line. 3D printed concrete has become particularly appealing to them for a variety of reasons. My name is Theo Voogd, I'm the innovation manager of Bruil. Bruil is a mid-sized company uh, based in the Netherlands on 13 locations. We have four precast factories, two dry mortar factories and also some ready mix plants. Teams from all different backgrounds have tried their hand at concrete 3D printing. Bruil, with their concrete experience, is uniquely positioned to offer some insights to this industry. They have a deep understanding for the variety of uses for concrete in construction, both commercial, residential, and industrial. Through vertical integration, they're able to command their supply chain and have full control of the projects they do. Material procurement and scheduling can often go awry on a construction project. Having all of this in-house allows Brewill to stay accountable and responsible for their timeline. Seeing such an experienced player experimenting with 3D printed concrete is definitely reassuring for the industry. We get in digital concrete printing because in 2013 and 14 the Netherlands were in a deep crisis and we as a traditional concrete company had to innovate. So in 2015 we started to develop our own 3D printing technology as well as the hardware, the software and the dry mixture. So we're working on several projects, like a social housing project for 30 houses, where we will uh, print the, the total wall construction. But the best known projects we are working on is the Water Taxi Stop in Rotterdam and project Baskeweg in Den Helder in the northern of the Netherlands. The structural principle of the water taxi stop is uh, based on six printed elements, double curved, which are joined together with pre-stressed cables. Applying pre-stressed cables in a curved construction is of course very complex, but with a lot of testing and the help of experts like DSE, we made it happen. We use steel plates in between the elements to center the cables and align them into the construction. The cables are fixed between the foundation and a steel end plate on the top. To get a permit for this kind of project, we have to prove it by design, by testing. So we build the entire water taxi stop and push it to the limits so that we can find the weak spot in the design and can improve it for the final version, which we are building right now. What we learned is that this construction is not only possible in theory, but also in practice. Of course, a good relationship with the municipality of Rotterdam is really important for this kind of projects. They need to have confidence in what you are going to create. For instance, the material was very important for them. So we are making and printing with real concrete so that the regulation will fit to this kind of constructions. Regulation and permitting is one of the biggest headaches these companies are currently faced with as they're trying to implement these new technologies in the built world. Let's hear from Brewill's engineer responsible for their 3D concrete printing about all of the potential this technology has to offer. My name is Elise Buiter and I'm an innovation engineer here at Brel. Three years ago I came to Brel and then we had a good prototype 3D printer. It was my role to turn this prototype into a production machine and to create the entire process around the 3D printer. To be able to print multiple objects in a day, we have placed the robot on the track so that we have a greater reach and that the elements have time to settle and to harden before we need to remove them again. What makes this location unique is that we do not just have a 3D printer, but we've created an entire production line where you can also coat the elements, but also saw them so they can be attached to the existing building. One of the strengths of our 3D printer is that we have a high control over our print head. So we can orient it in different directions to create uh, freeform elements, but also we have very high control over the amount of material which is deposited, so that we are able to make very accurate elements. An architect gives us a 3D model. This model probably comes from his parametric model. 
this model is then translated into robot code almost fully automatically. And this robot code contains all the information necessary for production, where, how the robot should move and how much material needs to be deposited. As soon as the production line has been started and the right robot code has been selected, the process is fully automatic and does not require any human intervention. In this way we have a fast, fully automatic production process and this also creates a very safe working environment. After production, we also use a 3D scanner to check the printed models with the original 3D model. With 3D printing we do not need formwork and the production process also has low waste. So therefore this production process already has a low carbon footprint. Next to this, with 3D printing gives you the ability to print hollow objects. For a project such as the water taxi stop, we use 40% of the material that we would have used if we would have used traditional casting methods. We believe that the choice between prefab printing or on-site printing depends completely on the project and the location. Sometimes you want very reliable building elements, so you'll choose for prefab printing, and sometimes you need to transport the elements over a very long distance, and then on-site fabrication might be the logical choice. We believe that 3D printing will enable the growth of digital fabrication in the entire sector. We would like to challenge you to look beyond 3D printing. Sure, we can print a 3D element here, but how do we use this product in the built environment? How can we attach such a 3D printed element to an existing building? Environmental consciousness and a circular economy are priorities to Bruel. One of the best ways to preserve the environment is by using the things we already have instead of throwing them away to make new ones. Here's how Bruil is seeking to revitalize an old apartment building. Our star project at the moment is Project Baskeweg in Den Helder. Here we're going to upgrade two apartment buildings of in total more than 150 apartments. The project consists in total 1200 3D printed elements like facade panels, balustrades and columns. The client wants to have bigger balconies on the existing building, so we place in front of the facade a new structure. The 3D printed elements are attached to the new structure. The new structure is carrying all the weight and is only attached to the existing building. In this building, we have more than 160 different shapes and sizes. During the design phase, the complete building is 3D scanned and the point cloud is the base for the rest of the design. With 3D printing, it's very easy to make all the elements for this kind of projects, because every element could have another size or shape. Even the difference between the two apartment buildings are really small, but we can easily adapt these changes to the models. And this particular project is chosen for renovation because it's more affordable and it's more sustainable. 3D printing is often seen in new projects, but this particular case shows that it's also really suitable for existing buildings to renovate them or to upgrade them. At this point, what does the industry need to move forward? Some would say the missing link is a material development. Here's what Bruil plans on doing about that. For the future, we want to make new concrete mixes where we use more recycled materials to increase the circularity of the product. For Braal, it is important that any new materials that are developed fall within the current regulations so that we are able to create products such as the Baskeweg. 3D printing isn't currently the primary focus of Bruil, but I'm sure it's very exciting to them to see all of the opportunities it's bringing to the table. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel and also check out the YouTube channel for Brew Wheel at the link in the description.